something that I want to try, which I've never really tried before, and that is setting up my welder according to a chart. And um, what I'm going to do is just take down some dimensions. These are the offcuts that came from the end of this section. And what I'm going to do is just measure them. Try and determine how thick this steel is. Now, according to this, it's about 0.8 of a millimeter, and I've got a little app on my phone, which is made by Miller, the guys that make the Miller welders. And I intend to mig mig this, so I select steel. Um, 22 gauge metal, which is 0.8 millimeter, and it's telling me that I need 15 to 16 volts if I'm using an argon CO2 mix on my gas, and wire speed at about 90 to 100 inches per minute. I'm just going to write those down. So 90 to 100 inches per minute on the wire and 15 to 16 volts amperage range 40 to 55 amps. Okay, so that is what the Miller software on my phone, that little app, is telling me. I need to weld these two together. So we'll grab the welder and we'll see if we can define these settings and that's just going to put us in the right ballpark to start on these welds. So let's get on with that. Right, so this is my MIG welder. It's a Kraft MIG 180. It's made by Sabora and uh, it's really quite a good plant to be honest. Nice smooth arc on it, and on the back here I've got um, uh, a C25 mix which is argon and carbon dioxide. But what I do want to show you is that on the front panel there is nothing really to give away any of the settings. We've got wire speed 0 to 10 on there, or 1 to 10, should I say, and then down here we've got one of seven positions for the transformer which again doesn't give anything away so as we established just a second ago from our little app on the mobile phone from Miller in order to weld this gauge of metal we want 90 to 100 inches per minute on our wire speed 15 to 16 volts on our transformer and 40 to 55 amps so I'm going to show you just very quickly how we're going to establish that on a welder that has no information feedback other than a bunch of numbers so just give me a second I'll get set up for that and I'll bring you in so what I've got here this is the um, this is the earth clamp off my welder and what I'm going to do is just clamp it to that block of wood there and this is the MIG torch as you can see there's our little button that we press when we want the gas to flow and the electricity to flow and the wire to flow at the end and we'll put that there too and what I've got here is a small digital multimeter and uh, this is only a cheap thing and it's only got one voltage range setting for DC current and most welders weld on DC current you get into AC when you're on um, on TIG welding and some buzz boxes deal with AC but on the whole as a general rule of thumb MIG welders like this are a DC current so I've got it set to DC current and what I'm going to do is I'm going to clamp my black probe to there which is the earth clamp on the welder um, I've set it to uh, 
to measure DC current and then what I'm going to do is switch the welder on and pull the trigger and while I'm pulling the trigger I'm going to get me red probe and I'm going to shove it on here so let's whip that off okay what we've got at the end of a MIG is you've got this copper tip where the wire flows through and we can take a reading off there now it's not going to matter I can hold it there with my fingers so long as I don't touch the earth nothing is going to come of me so but just to be sure to be sure we'll keep it at a distance so hopefully you can see those numbers there I'm looking for between 15 and 16 volts on my welder which I'm not sure if it goes down as far as that but let's have a quick go let's see what we look what okay so I've got my welder switched on and if you watch the wire there when I pull the trigger the wire is going to come out very slowly if you look at our multimeter here I'm going to put that on there and then I'm going to pull the trigger and we'll see what value gets registered on our screen 17 so that's telling me I've got 17 volts coming through this transformer let me just get my MIG pliers and snip off snip off the wire so just out of interest what we'll do is we'll run through the settings so um, I've been meaning to do this for a while anyway so on number one I've got 17 volts I've got two three four five six and seven seven positions on my welder okay number two number two is 19 volts okay number three Twenty volts. Number four. Twenty one. It was fluctuating there between twenty one and twenty two volts. Now that could just be a bit of a bad contact with my multimeter. Okay, number five. 24 volts number six 26 volts and number seven 30, 31, let's call it 30 volts. So those are the settings on my MIG. Now let's determine the wire feed speed. So let's look at our wire feed speed and the easiest way to make this conversion, I don't work particularly well in inches, but this is inches per minute it was given us and it was saying 90 to 100 inches per minute so if we take that down the middle at 95 and I think probably the easiest way to do it is with a tape measure so if we pull out a tape measure and we find 95 okay 95 inches is 240 centimeters so I'm going to put that at 240 centimeters all right 240 centimetres per minute of wire feed speed. So what we want to do with this is divide that by 10. So 240 divided by 10 equals 24. 
and the reason I divided it by 10 is that there are 60 seconds in a minute divide 60 by 10 and we get a 6 second window so we want to see 24 centimeters in 6 seconds so 24 over 6 is our wire feed speed and we want that on level 1 of our welder because our welder doesn't go down as far as 15 to 16 but it does go down as far as 17 on its lowest setting so this is going to put us in the ballpark of where ideally we need to set our welder up to so let's see if we can get 24 centimeters in six seconds from our wire so probably the easiest way to do this is with a small steel rule let's grab one here and it could be that we're on our lowest setting let me get a stopwatch on the go so stopwatch okay reset So on wire feed setting number one, make sure my earth clamp is nowhere near what I'm doing here. In fact, the earth clamp is clamped to a piece of wood on the side of the, the side of my bench. So let me switch the welder on. And I'm gonna go with, this is wire speed number one, and I'm gonna give it a six second burst. So I can do this without being in the way of the camera. One, two, three, four, five, six, and stop. And we are at 23 centimeters in six seconds. So in order to weld this, our welding app is telling us that pretty much my welder needs to be on its lowest possible conceivable setting which is one on my voltage range puts me at 17 although i'm actually looking for 15 to 16 17 is the lowest i've got and i want 90 to 100 inches of wire speed in inches per minute so we took the 95 which is the average of the two we work that out to be 240 centimeters. We divide that by 10, gives us 24 centimeters in six seconds. So approximately on my welder, position one, wire speed one, is gonna put me in the right ballpark for that material. Let's get this wiped off and let's see if, if that's true. Now I don't actually own a welding table, but what I do have is this big, thick slab of steel, which I'm gonna use as a little ground just to run a few test pieces. So I'm gonna clamp my ground to that. And then this is actually one of the pieces that got cut off this section. And we're just gonna run a couple of little beads and have a look just to see and have a feel whether or not we reckon that our welder setup according to the Miller application on my telephone is good for what we need so we're going to do a couple of little practice welds make sure the welder's set up and then we'll turn our attention to the real thing so let me get my welding gear on get the gas switched on on the welder, get all that ready to go, and I'll be right back. Right, 
Now, I don't know if you can see that. It took us just a second or so for the heat to get in. But that's quite a nice bead. And you can see the blue line here. This is the heat affected zone of the weld. And we've got penetration all the way through. Now if this wasn't on this big backing plate, I'm wondering whether or not that would have even burnt through. Let's try another bead next to it. It's burnt right through. Which to be honest is probably what we want because we're only going to be able to weld this from one side. I'm just going to try up in the wire speed very slightly. And I'm going to change for a different piece of metal because that one's getting hot now. Now there, look, blowing a hole in the top of it. It's not really something I want to do when it comes to the real deal. Now, there's only a very small piece here and it's not having a lot of chance to dissipate that heat. We've had a weld here, a couple of tacks, so maybe it's just a little bit over hot. Or maybe I just got it wrong. Well, I think we can safely say that when it comes to welding this, running a continuous bead is going to be a no-no. It's just going to blow out. At least with my welder and my level of skill anyway. I think what we're going to have to do is do a series of little tacks and basically pulse it in. And let it cool in between. 